Hello, welcome. This talk is a quickie talk, 15 minutes, on using Angular schematics to simplify your life. My name is Matt Rabel. I grew up in the backwoods of Montana with no electricity and no running water, and I had to walk two miles to the bus stop every day. But that's not what's really important. What's important is that I have two teenagers, and even though they stare at their phones all day, I do have a middle child who's not as bad as those ones. His name's Hefe. He's a Volkswagen bus. I bought him in 2004 off eBay and took 12 years to make him look like that. He's got a Porsche engine in it. I'm super into classic Volkswagens. If you are as well, please come talk to me afterwards. I work for a company called Okta. We do users as a software service. That's UAS, not a great acronym. So I like to say we do authentication in the cloud. What we're gonna talk about today is what are Angular schematics, and then we'll talk about creating and testing a schematic and then how to use schematic templates, how to use the expression language that templates offer in schematics. I'll do a little demo of OpenID Connect authentication, and then I'll talk about how you can use schematics for React, Vue, Ionic, and even React Native. So schematics were released in January 2018 by the Angular team, and they're basically a scaffolding library for the modern web. At least that's what the Angular team calls them. In short, it provides an API that allows you to manipulate files and add new dependencies in Angular projects. But you can also use them in non-Angular projects. So to begin, what you'll do is you'll install the schematics CLI. So you can do that with npm i-g, and then you'll use that CLI to create a new project. So in this case, I'm creating a blank project, and I'm just going to call it My Component. And you'll see that it creates about eight files. It's got a README, a Git Ignore, NPM Ignore. And the NPM Ignore is one that you should be very aware of. I say this because it bit me for hours one day. I'll come back to that in a minute. But then, of course, you have a package JSON, tsconfig, because Angular, by default, uses TypeScript. And then it's got a collection and an index and a test. And so in that collection.json is where you define how everything fits together. So first of all, it uses JSON schema to define the attributes that you can have in this file. And then you'll notice there's a factory. That factory is the key element that points to where your code is. And so in this case, it points to my component, that index.ts, and then the my component function. And so if we were to crack open that index.ts and look at that, you'll see it's got that my component function, and there's really nothing in it. So the important thing to know here is that schematics won't perform any direct actions on your file system. You specify what you'd like to do on a tree. And so in this case, you can see that tree, right? It's being returned, and we're not doing anything to it. So by default, this schematic will do nothing. The tree is a data structure with a set of files that already exist and a staging areas of files that will basically be updated or even added. So to look at that, my component there, you can see it does nothing. Well, to test it, you can actually write a test and prove it does nothing. So these are both the files that are generated by default. So you'll see we import the tree, then we have a collection path, and the cool thing is there's that schematic test runner that allows us to actually run schematics and then run your specific schematic. So in this case, we can just say, hey, you know, run it again, it's an empty tree, and then make sure that no new files are created. And so it gives a nice way to actually unit test the schematics you're creating. So manipulating files is one thing, but chances are you'll probably want to add new files to a project. For instance, one of the schematics that I've written is to add Bootstrap to an Angular project using ng Bootstrap. And so in that case, what you'll typically do is you'll want to add Bootstrap as a dependency, and then maybe you'll go into the index.html and add you know, a link to the CSS file or whatnot. So templates are very useful for adding new files to a project. And so in this case, you could create, for instance, an app component.ts, an associated template with a .html extension, 
and you could put those in a files source app directory. And the reason I did it this way is files is just a containing directory, right? But source app matches what most Angular apps will have if they're created with Angular CLI. And so after creating these files, your directory structure will look like this. And then what you can do is you can actually modify those templates to have variables in them. So in this case, our app.component.ts has a variable of name that we'll be passing in. And so that's one example of how you can have an expression in your templates. And then for the HTML template, you can see there's nothing really special about this one. We're just pulling in the name from that component. And then in order to find the name prompt, what you can do is in that schema.json file, you'll actually have to create this file in the source my component directory. And in here, you will specify the different properties you can have. And in this case, notice we say that the name is required. You could also default it to a value. So if people don't put in a name, then it defaults to something else. And so once you define that schema.json for your prompts, then you go back into that collection.json and you specify the schema. And then once that's all set up, then you can go ahead and copy and manipulate your templates. So you'll see the first thing that I'm not showing, and I'll show this on the next slide, is setting up the options. And what this does is it just kind of builds up the project. And then it goes ahead and figures out where we're going to move everything to. And this is going to be just the root directory of where you're in. And then the template force source, it's going to grab those from the schematic. And then ideally, you just have this template argument. You have this move argument, and you're done. But you'll notice there's a fix in there for a bug that I found that I still get updates on. So as far as I know, it's not fixed. And I originally wrote this code about a year ago. So um, you do have to you know, write this block of code to actually go ahead and make sure and overwrite any files that you've updated. And then the setup options just basically is able to get a workspace, get a project from that workspace. And this is a very Angular specific thing. If you're doing a React project or a Vue project, chances are you don't have multiple projects in the same directory structure. But Angular allows you to have multiple projects when it creates a new project with Angular CLI. So then to test that these templates that we're copying in is actually working, you can write a test. And you'll see before each, we're just setting up the workspace. And then we're also running Angular CLI. Because one thing you might not know is Angular CLI is all based on schematics. And that's how the project kind of came to be. It was the basis for Angular CLI. And so we're running that second one to actually create an application for us. And then we're running our schematic and basically verifying that you know that file was created and its contents have the name that we created it with in there. And then once you have you know, your code working, your tests working, you'll actually want to test your schematic in a project. So the thing that I found that is best to do is npm pack. You can do npm link. The problem is npm pack will create a distribution, like a tar gz file or a zip file. And then that acts just as if it's been deployed to npm. When you do npm link, it'll read all the files from where your project is, but that doesn't mean those files actually end up in your final distribution. So then you can create like a new Angular app using ng-new. You can cd into there, and then you can use npm install that points to that packed file that you created. And then you can run whatever your schematic might be. So if your schematic is named my component, and within there you have a my component function, that's what it would look like. ngg is for ng-generate. You can, you, know, you can do services and components and everything. So you can use that to run your actual schematic as well. You can also use schematic as that command line thing that you used to create your schematic in the first place. You can use that command to run schematics too. And then you'll want to publish your schematic to NPM so others can use it. The biggest reason that I really like schematics is what I found was I was doing demos on stage. And they were taking too long. I had to go and modify like four or five files to add authentication to an Angular app. And by using schematics, I could do it with just one command. And so by default, in that npm ignore that's created, it ignores all TypeScript files. 
And so the reason for that is because it actually wants you to write TypeScript, but then publish JavaScript, right? Because it's transpiled, so they're just doing you a service by not publishing your actual source code. But if your templates are TypeScript, it's going to ignore those templates as well. So this took me you know, a good four or five hours one day to figure it out. I kept publishing to NPM, and I was like, why are my templates not working? It was because all of NPM ignores. So make sure you modify that so any templates extensions aren't in there. And then you just do NPM publish. And then one of the neat things you can do is add support for ng-add. So if you just run ng-add and the name of your schematic, it'll run the default one that you specify in this file. So this is, again, looking at our collection.json. You'll see you have to name it ng-add for this to work. And then you can point it to your own index file in a new directory. But then, obviously, the description can be what you want. But the schema will be the same as you had before, because it's still going to prompt the user. And then what you can do is very easily just chain it and call the original schematic. And so that's a nice, easy way to do it. And then in your templates themselves, there's a number of different placeholders you can use. We saw that name. That's the first one there. You can also use the expression with a minus sign. Um, and that will be escape for HTML when inserted. And there's also just inline code if you want to do if statements or anything like that. And then if you want to have you know, text in a variable for some reason. So here's an example template that I wrote uh, for doing Ionic templates. And you'll notice I switched between Cordova. Um, the other option is Capacitor. And so it does different imports based on those. The one thing I did notice is it doesn't trim out those lines. Um, so it's one of those things in templating languages that you might be used to. If you have a line that's an if statement, then there's a blank line in the resulting file. So you might have to move things around a bit to get rid of that. And so one of the things that I wrote was a schematic that will allow you to add Okta to a uh, Angular app using ng-add. So this is what it looks like. It goes ahead and adds Okta Angular as a dependency. And then it creates a number of new files. And then it updates some existing files. And so that installs our SDK for Angular authentication. It adds an auth routing module for configuration and initialization of our uh, main service. And then it adds and configures an HTTP interceptor to add an authorization header with an access token. And then it adds authenticated logic to the app.component.ts. And then it generates a home component that just has either a login or a logout button. So this is what it looks like, the result. It just has a login button at the very bottom there. And I actually wrote a whole blog post about how to do the ng bootstrap uh, schematic that I talked about. So you can see that. There's also a screencast that goes with that. And Octadev Schematics is a project that I wrote just so I could do demos, and it would be much easier. So it supports Angular, React, Vue, and Ionic 4, as well as React Native as of the 1.0 version. It uh, detects JavaScript or TypeScript just by inspecting your package.json file and then adds authentication accordingly. So we do have 45 seconds left. I already created my secure project here. If I go in there, I can do ng-add, octadev schematics. Oh, sorry. I make that mistake a lot. Mirror. So you can see the most painful part of this demo is npm install, as it usually is, especially on conference Wi-Fi, or as in this case, on my phone. So it'll go ahead and add any dependencies that are required by your library, and then it'll go ahead and prompt you. So in this case, it says, what is your OIDC apps issuer URL? So I can go to Chrome here, go to API authorization servers in my instance, grab it right here. The one thing I've noticed is that does sometimes have a carriage return on the end. So I like to put it in a new window, make sure it's not there. Paste it there. And then what's my app's client ID? Go grab it there. And this is using Angular 9 or the 
Dotto release candidate. As far as that weird, uh, what do you call that, a progress bar? That used to work with Angular 8, but there's something with schematics in Angular 9 that it's, it's got some issues there. But um, that's how you would add authentication. You can see that that's a fun demo to do. Um, I could also start it, I guess, suppose, ng-serve. It's always the hard part, right? Waiting for things to go. So um, I will go back to it. It was just a distraction to trick you. All right, it's up and running. Go there. Now you can see down here at the bottom, since I'm already logged in, it's going to come right back here, and it'll show me a log out button. Come on, baby. Well, now you know it's a real demo if it didn't work, right? It worked when I tried it earlier. Oh, well. Oh, wait. That's the problem. Now it's got a log out, right? So I'm logged in. And I could use SDK to get users' information or whatnot. But that's, uh, that's the quickie. Uh, keep in touch. Follow me on my blog or on Twitter. I'll upload this presentation to Speaker Deck. And as usual, most of my code is on Okta Developer. Thanks for coming. <laughs>